Shalom. Today we are on the very last lesson of Hebrew alphabet 2x2, two two, except today there's just one. Last chance for your font chart. So the only letter that we haven't looked at yet is the final form for the Kaf. You're going to find it under the number value 20, and the Kaf extends below the line. So here are the five letters with their final forms. The final forms are called sofit in Hebrew. It just means the last one. Today we have the kaf and the kaf sofit. You see the mem, remember the mem is open at the bottom, but the mem sofit is closed all the way around. Here is the nun. The nun sofit goes below the line, but it's a narrow letter. Pe with his little uvula hanging down, and the pe sofit has the same form. And then the tzadi maybe a man on his knees, and the tzadi sofit also extends below the line. Maybe the man is standing up. In terms of figures that look alike, the kaf sofit, the final kaf, does resemble the dalit, but it goes below the line. The dalit is on the line. The pe sofit has a similar form, but it has a little uvula hanging down. In most cases, there is no vowel in the last letter of any Hebrew word. There are a few exceptions to that. However, with the kaf sofit, there is always a vowel in it. And of course, it will be the last letter because it's a final form. The two vowels you're going to see in the kaf sofit is that ah and then the shva, which is going to be silent. We'll look at some examples. So this letter is used as personal pronoun attachment to a preposition. So here we're looking at the preposition, which is lamed, which means two. The first figure you see on the right is pronounced lecha, lecha. The shva makes a small sound because it's the beginning of the syllable, and then we pronounce the cha. This means to you, masculine and singular, to one male person. The figure next to it is lach. Lach. The lamet has the ah sound, and then the kaf sofit has the shva. It has no sound, but it is there for spelling. Remember I told you the answer to all your questions would be spelling. This means to you for a single female. So these final kafs are also used for possessive pronouns. If I say this is your house, I'm going to use these this kaf sofit. So the phrase beneath says ma shlom cha. Probably you have heard this, probably you know this already. Ma means what or how. You see the shalom, that's the peace. If I'm asking a single man, how is your peace, which is how they ask how are you, then I will say ma shlom cha. I'm talking to a single male. If it would be for the feminine, I would say ma shlom ech, and the shva would be in the kaf sofit. So today we're going to look at right up front our memory verse, and I'm sure you already have heard this, and you know it from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. I'm going to read it a little bit slowly. Yevarechecha, Yehovah, v'yishmarecha. Ya'er, Yehovah, Panav, Elecha, Vichuneka. There is a dagish in that final kaf there. Yisa, Yehovah, Panav, Elecha, Vyasim, Lecha, Shalom. You hear how many chas? You see all these final kaf forms. The prayer is very personal. It's to you. Now, we should understand that in Hebrew, as in many other languages where they distinguish between male and female, even if there's a group of 4,000 women and one man, they address it in the masculine. So don't be insulted, ladies. This prayer is also for you but it's addressed to a single person. These are the things that God will do for you.
As we've talked about elsewhere, Hebrew is a very dense language with a lot of prefixes and a lot of suffixes that define the verb form, the person, the tense, also some things that we will find on nouns, and we're going to talk about how you can learn those at the end of this video. For now, we're going to look at each of the verbs that appear. The first verb, which is yivarechecha, the yud at the beginning means he will. We just learned that the cha at the end means you. And so we have a three-letter root in the middle, barach. Barach means to bless. It comes from the concept of being on your knees. Yishmerecha, the three-letter root in the middle, shamar, to guard or to keep. Ya'er, from the three-letter root, or, which is light. God will give light. He will shine his face upon you, as you know. The next verb is Hanan, to have grace, to give mercy. It comes from the root for setting camp together. A Sukkot is coming up, and if you're going to stay in camp with people, you have to give them grace and mercy. The next verb comes from a three-letter root, Nasa. It means to lift up or to carry. He's going to lift up his face. The last verb, Yasem comes from a verb sim, which means to put or place. It's more than that he will just give you peace, but he's going to place his peace upon you. Here is the URL for a very nice video of a native Israeli woman reading this very slowly. So you can just play that, listen. You should listen and look at the words at the same time. She puts them on the screen and you can become more fluent in learning how to read and to understanding what you're reading. I'll put the link also in the description box below. And here is a very nice piece of Rico Cortez doing one of the chants for this. All of the Tanakh has indications for chanting. The chanting is not uniform across cultures. It's different across cultures, so it might sound different if you're in a different kind of synagogue, a different ethnic group. And also all the prayers have traditional melodies. So I hope you enjoy this rendition of what is called the Aaronic Benediction. So, those are all the letters. What I suggest for you next is there's a series on this channel which is called Finding Your Hebrew Roots, which has nothing to do about your DNA or your genetics. It has to do with how to pick apart the words that you're looking at. So out of the 22 letters, 11 of them are used for prefixes and suffixes and infixes and prepositions. And as you begin to learn those, then you can pick apart the words that you're looking at. If you have any questions, you can be sure to leave a comment on this video. I hope that you have gained a lot out of this presentation. Next time, we will go on to something else. In the meantime, Tasimita Inayama Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.